Hey guys, what's happening? So, instead of actually fixing other people's 3D printers, um, I gotta fix my own today. Um, yeah, I was doing a print and uh, it failed like within an hour or two in running a clipper um, with clipper screen, type like 7 inch touch screen. This is a, a printer bot, old printer bot, simple metal, probably 8 to 10 years old. It's my first printer. But I actually love it. It's my I print to it. You know, it's my go-to printer. It's small. It's really accurate, high-quality prints. But the issue is, my Pico board is not getting power. So that's weird. I know my power supply must be putting out power because my buck converter. See that right there? That's that's my. Uh, it's a little buck converter. So I'm taking 12 volts, converting it down to 5.1 volt, the power of the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B plus. Um, but I'm obviously not getting power here on the board because I don't see any sort of lights on that board. And every time I reboot it, um, it, you know, I obviously can't communicate with Clipper, so. Um, I mean, it could be a bad board. Um, but I'm going to take my multimeter here and do some tests with it. So there's actually a fuse on the board. So, I mean, it could be a blown fuse. It could be, um, a lot of big tree check boards. I mean, I, mean, I fix probably anywhere from three to five 3D printers a week. And um, I noticed that the the big tree tech boards will, will get like an internal short on the CPU where it can't even communicate with it. So this is a different processor than, than, than like a, let's say like an STM Micro 32 or something. Um, but typically these are big tree, big tree tech boards, the Marlin boards. Um, Alright, so I don't have no clue what's up with this thing. I just know it won't communicate and obviously I'm not getting power. So first thing I'm going to do is check for power here. Make sure I'm getting 12 volts input. And then, if that doesn't work, I'm going to check that fuse right there. I'm going to do a continuity twist on the fuse and see what's up. So like right now, I have no idea what's wrong with this thing. Alright, so I'm hoping on that I can get this in the same shot. So that's my fluke monthly meter. I'm going to put it in DC mode. Check for main power. Right here. Okay, right here and here. All right, getting 14 volts. So that's more than adequate enough. I think I turned up the voltage a little bit too on the power supply, but this board should only handle 24 volt. Um, all right, so I know I'm getting power there. Um, like I said, it could be bad boards. I'm do continuity mode here. So continuity mode. That's my battery's bad. Low. Alright, let's change that. Alright, let's try that again. Place the battery. Continuity mode. So I'm checking the fuse right here. And it looks like we have a bad fuse. I know it's working. So it's pretty unusual that usually a fuse burn, blows out for a reason. Oh, that's it. See that? What's that? Just, oh, it's just a loose fuse. Huh. Never seen that before. Huh. Alright. Well, just because I fix 3D printers doesn't mean I'm immune to <laughs> 3D printer issues. Um, that would be the, probably the first I've ever seen that before. So, I'm going to actually take a look and I'm going to turn the power off. And see if I can maybe like bend the contacts back on that thing. Um, because obviously the fuse is fine, just, just a loose fuse. So what I'm going to do is take the fuse out and then see if I can, maybe I can get on camera, let's see. Alright, I'm going to turn the power off. Alright, see if I can get my strong glasses on. And then hopefully I can get this on here. I'm going to try to pull them. Out. And I'm going to need some more needle dust pliers. Maybe get something underneath. Yeah, it doesn't look very good though. It looks pretty uh, heated up. Yeah, it doesn't look that great. So my, I'm assuming it was loose from the factory. Because normally you don't shouldn't get heat on a fuse. So it means that if it was getting bad contact, there'd be it'd be generating a lot of heat right there. You know, like I said, if, like it's, it's the same thing like with like a like a power connector. Like the original 3D printers it used to come with a like a, a power connector right on the actual heated bed. And they used to burn out all the time. I used to replace them all the time for customers. 
Um, all right, so let me get that out there. I'm gonna try to. I need to get some in there. I need to get this. I probe. There it goes on the ground. But yeah, if you can see right here, take a look. See how it's all dirty? I'm gonna try to bend those contacts in. I mean, I can get it on camera. First, I'm gonna clean it with my uh, see right there. I mean. See right there, these little, these little metal contacts right there. So I'm going to clean the fuse, bend these in a little bit, grab some of my uh, deoxid and clean that thing off with a Q-tip. Alright, so if you guys are wondering what I use for contact cleaner, it's called deoxid. This is like the best stuff you can buy. It's really expensive though, it's like $26 per bottle. Put a link down below if you want it, but yeah, this stuff is incredible. So I'm going to let it just soak in there. I'll get the front one too. And then here's a closer look at the of, of the fuse. Well, see how it's kind of discolored here? That's why it's supposed to look. I might scrape it a little bit too, you know, with the my exacto to get it kind of clean. Because that little, that oxidation layer, well let me soak in here. Um, that oxidation layer, that's what this stuff is called, deoxid, right? Deoxid deoxid is the uh, metal. So let's soak in there. I might come back with a wire brush or something, really finely. Let's let that stuff soak in. Yeah, I know my camera work is horrible. But I'm also gonna like use my little exacto knife because I wanna get clean metal there and I wanna get the oxidation off there. Yeah, my my guess is that it was just a loose these contacts were loose and um, you know that's creating generating heat when you don't have good contact. So let that soak in. Make sure I get. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to expose clean metal to it and get that oxidation layer off. Um, so the, because this printer is so tiny, I actually have the hot end and the heated bed both going through the the board. So I'm using the internal MOSFETs for the main power. So all the power, this is the main feed for the, the board, so all the power is going through that fuse. So on these larger printers, like these things and anything that's usually above, um, you, you add 250, I guess, you know. I mean, you can get away with, like, say, like an Ender 3, you could probably, I mean, I should have a problem in the MOSFETs. But on the bigger boards, you want to have an external MOSFET. You just want the internal MOSFET to trigger, you want the internal MOSFET of the board to trigger the, the external MOSFET, which is a larger MOSFET that can actually handle the current you know, to uh, feed the bigger boards. Alright, so yeah, so all my power is being drawn to that fuse right there for the board and the hot end. Let's see if I fix it. So I got the fuse back in there. I don't really like... I mean, I should... In the, I should just... I don't know. I mean, I in reality, I should I probably just desolder that connection. The fuse holder and put a new one on there. But uh, I gotta get some prints done for a customer. I'm, I'm doing a Prusa you know, Mini i3 BMG conversion for a customer. I get that finished, so maybe I'll do that later. All right, cool. Can start printing again. All right, so uh, yeah, so you have an SKR Pico board. Um, this is the new, first time I've ever seen this on any 3D printer uh, board from SKR, and I've probably replaced a few hundred of them. So um, yeah, usually it's a shorter processor, maybe a bad MOSFET, but. Uh, Alright guys, cool. Hopefully this video helps somebody. Awesome.